I am taking this opportunity as the founder of the J. Frank Norris Historical Society. I want to make clear the uh, background of, of the real John Birch. Most people have heard of the John Birch Society, which was founded ten years after the death of this World War II hero. So the real story of Captain John Birch has no connection with the uh, World War, uh, who, who was a World War II hero, other than the fact that the society named in honor of him uh, uh, as, uh, as the uh, uh, a proper recognition of, uh, of him as a World War II hero. John Birch had arrived in China as a missionary to that country under the sponsorship of the First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas. During his tour in China beginning in 1939, Birch learned quickly to speak the Chinese language as well as acquiring secrets of Chinese culture which enabled him to uh, work behind the Japanese lines. And in April of 1942, the legendary Jimmy Doolittle, the Jimmy Doolittle raid was launched over Tokyo as a means by which uh, a psychological blow could be aimed at the, at the Japanese Empire. <clears throat> it was now, it was common knowledge that the Doolittle Raiders, 16 bombers uh, in total, crashed in, in Japanese conquered territory. Fate uh, would have it, perhaps providentially so, that John Birch was residing in this occupied territory from which vantage point he heard of the Doolittle plane crash. Now here is a quote from the autobiography of Colonel Doolittle referring to John Birch. When I arrived, now I'm quoting from the autobiography of Colonel Jimmy Doolittle. When I arrived in Chongqing, China, I told Colonel Claire Chennault, leader of the Flying Tigers, about Birch and how he had helped us. Chennault said he could use an American for intelligence duties who could speak Chinese and know the country well. I never saw this fine young man again, but learned later that Chennault commissioned him as a first lieutenant on July 4, 1942. Although Birch served as an intelligence officer, he was still a chaplain at heart. Wherever he was on Sundays, he conducted religious services for Chinese Christians, often at the risk of his life behind Japanese lines. Chennault, uh, fearful that Birch would crack under the strain of continual clandestine activities, urged a leave of absence. But John Birch refused, saying, I'll leave China only when the enemy is defeated. So it was from this point that John Birch was mustered into the service of an intelligence unit working in this capacity for four years behind the Japanese lines and at the risk of his own life. John Birch rendered in, invaluable service in the capacity as an intelligence officer. Birch was looking forward to a visit back home just a few days after the end of World War II, and tragically he was gunned down by the Chinese Communists uh, who, at, at, uh, who at one point had begun to, to reign in their, in their reign of terror over all of China. This is basically the story of the real John Birch, which I feel so inclined to, to make it a common knowledge of the uh, antics of this of this World War II hero as well as a servant of our Lord. And uh, I'm emphasizing again, he had no connection with the John Birch Society, founded ten years before or after his death. So friends, spread the word and, and let it be known who the real John Birch really is. And as a side note, which is not of significance, but while living in Fort Worth, I had the privilege of, of, of being closely associated with John Birch, so I know quite a bit about this, this young man. 
who was killed at the age of, of, of uh, 27. So spread the word, tell your friends about my blog site, and may I say again, God bless the United States of America.